Well, good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. I'm pleased to help announce the launch of I Fund Women Vermont, a statewide initiative to drive funding to early stage female entrepreneurs. It's great to have I Fund Women, Women's uh, co founder, Kate Anderson, here with us today, and she'll provide more details shortly. But briefly, this, is a, uh, this will be a crowd uh, funding opportunity, a platform that offers women entrepreneurs in Vermont another source of capital, particularly in the early stages when it can be difficult to find funding. Vermont has a proud tradition of leading the way in many areas, and crowdfunding to support our businesses can be added to that impressive list. In 1984, Ben and Jerry's offered Vermonters an opportunity to get a scoop of the action by investing small amounts of money in the startup ice cream company, and we know what happened then. This uh, was a first in the nation. Uh, this was an experiment that allowed Main Street the opportunity to invest affordable amounts of money into a growing company. The capital raised was successful, bringing in over $750,000 from over 1,000 Vermont families. This helped move uh, the company out of that old gas station in Burlington and into a manufacturing facility in Waterbury. And the rest, as they say, is history. Had it not been for those early investors, I'm not sure Ben and Jerry's would be what it is today. And although not coined then, today this type of investment would be called crowdfunding. And other Vermont companies, such as Earth's Best uh, Baby Food and Catamount Brewery, uh, use this financing tool to start, build, and expand their businesses as well. More recently, the Department of Financial Regulation has revived, revised Vermont's crowdfunding regulations to make them the most progressive in the country, making it easier for a Main Street investor in Vermont to invest in a local company than it is anywhere else in the country. This is particularly good news for female entrepreneurs who have traditionally found it even more difficult to secure financing from venture capital firms and financial institutions. This will be the area of focus for I Fund Women, which is so important because women businesses in Vermont uh, are a vital part to our economy. Vermont women own over 23,000 businesses and employ over 36,000 people. These businesses generate annual revenues of over $2 billion each year. While these numbers are impressive, there is still tremendous growth potential. If just one in five of the existing women-owned businesses hired one new employee, it would result in 4,600 new jobs for Vermonters. Access to capital is crucial for startups and a major challenge in growing any business, but much more so for women-owned businesses when compared to their male counterparts. For this reason, we're excited for the launch of the iFund Women Platform in Vermont. We've been a leader in crowdfunding legislation and by adding this women-focused platform to the stack of great programs already available here in Vermont, I know we are on our way to realizing tremendous growth for our women-owned businesses. I want to thank iFund Women for bringing this platform to Vermont and to its local partners, Milk Money, Vermont Works, and the Vermont Women's Fund. So at this point, I'd like to invite our Commissioner of Economic Development, Joan Goldstein, to say a few words. Yeah. Thanks, Governor. I, uh, I'm actually old enough to remember the door-to-door -door sales of the Ben & Jerry's stock sale. I uh, wasn't living in Vermont at the time, but my in-laws had retired to Waterbury, and my father-in-law told us that some crazy guys came to his door and, <laughs> <laughs> and offered stock in an ice cream company. And Well, alas, we weren't one of the first thousand uh, families to invest in this great company, but uh, Vermont has such a great tradition of innovation, and the governor's administration and uh, DFR and uh, the rest of the partners involved in this just uh, show, exemplify the strong relationships we have in the entrepreneurial in creating an entrepreneurial ecosystem in Vermont. Um, this, is, this problem with startup capital is not just uh, unique to Vermont. I mean, basically California, Massachusetts, New York, and Texas receive 80% of all venture investment nationwide, uh, with very little capital making its way to rural states like Vermont. 
So funding a biz business becomes difficult for all entrepreneurs. As a state, we need to do a better job helping Vermont entrepreneurs and, uh, attract capital to the state, and I Fund Women is a great platform to help women launch their businesses and a great example of the creative ways we could help attract more investment to Vermont. Economic development is, is nowhere without entrepreneurs. Uh, we constantly need a new influx of ideas and we need the funding to help spur that on. The um, women entrepreneurs are majority owners of a third of all privately held firms in Vermont, but on average nationally receive less than 3% of all venture capital funding. Here lies a tremendous potential for growth, growth for companies and growth for Vermont's economy. It is my pleasure now to introduce iFund Women co-founder, Kate Anderson. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor Scott, and thank you, Joan, for the kind introduction, and thank you for supporting the female entrepreneurs in the state of Vermont. Um, we are honored to part with, partner with Governor Scott, who clearly is passionate about the entrepreneurship space because he himself was an entrepreneur, an early entrepreneur, I think I read. Um, uh, he had a paper route, and he even um, bought a paddle boat and pay for it by renting out, right. renting out rides on a paddle boat. So he clearly understands the need for early stage investment um, in the entrepreneurship space. So we're really honored to partner with him. Um, every day in the United States, almost 1,800 new businesses are being started by female entrepreneurs. That's over 650,000 new businesses a year on top of the 11 million existing firms run by women in the US. And only 1% of companies in general will ever raise venture capital fund, and that's okay. Unfortunately, as Louisa mentioned, women only get two to 6% of the venture capital dollars allocated. And the options that we are left with when trying to fund our early stage startups are getting a bank loan or maxing out our credit cards. And when we do receive funding, we work with less than half of the working capital that our male counterparts do. The lack of early stage funding resources for women-led businesses exists all over the country, and it's time to fix this. We need to level the playing field so that entrepreneurs can have equal access to capital to grow their businesses. And this issue is exactly why my team and I started iFundWomen.com, which is a fundraising platform de um, designed specifically for early stage women-led startups and small businesses. And today we're thrilled to now announce the launch of iPhone Women Vermont, a crowdfunding platform for Vermont entrepreneurs. Crowdfunding is a practice of funding a project or a venture by raising many small amounts of cash from lots of people. It's typically done on the internet. Um, unfortunately, not like Ben and Jerry did, knocking on people's doors, but, but we say anyway that it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Um, and we believe that iPhone Women should be the first stop on every female entrepreneur's funding journey. I'm here representing the iFund Women team of coaches, real humans who are here to prepare you um, through the crowdfunding process. Our team will guide you on how to start and run your crowdfunding campaign, and we can even help you pr produce an awesome pitch video so that you can really sell people on your idea. If you're a woman-led startup, small business, nonprofit, or have a side hustle you wanna launch, iFund Women is for you. Go sign up now and start working with a coach um, to prepare your campaign. You have until March 31st, 2019 to complete your crowdfunding campaign. And fully funded campaigns will have the opportunity to raise even more capital by participating in the first ever iFund Women Vermont pitch competition, which is happening this spring in the great state of Vermont. If you're not an entrepreneur but eager to join this movement, please consider contributing to the Vermont Accelerator Pool. This is a pool of money awarded to the high-performing um, iPhone Women of Vermont entrepreneurs. You can contribute now at the iPhone Women link that is um, linked everywhere. Again, female entrepreneurs in Vermont, your time is now to get funded. Don't wait. Get your campaigns launched and start raising money. Our team of coaches is standing by to help you and walk you through this process. To close, I would like to thank um, an old school entrepreneur, Governor Scott, and his wonderful team again for putting their full support behind iPhone Women of Vermont. In addition, we would like to thank Vermont Works and the Vermont Women's Fund for jumping on board and putting their support, and by support we mean money, behind iFund Women Vermont. And finally, we want to thank Lu Louisa Sheepley, founder of Milk Money. Louisa cares deeply about the entrepreneurship space in Vermont, so much so that she cold called us out of the blue and, and requ requested that we open up this cohort. So this wouldn't have been possible without Louisa's um, initiative. Louisa is a true innovator, and we are really proud to call Milk Money as partner. 
So uh, I fund women, so Vermont entrepreneurs, now is your time to get funded. You can apply now and start working with a coach to raise money for your business. Thank you so much. And I am happy now to introduce Sarah Spencer, um, who's gonna run a campaign on I fund women of uh, Vermont Chalky Paint. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Spencer. I'm the CEO and founder of Vermont Chalky Paint. It's a non-toxic decorative paint that's mined, manufactured, and made here in Vermont. We come in four season sets, January thaw, spring, summer, uh, harvest market, and vintage holiday. And September 1st, we just launched our Pro Packs, which have been very well received. So we're pretty excited about that. Our Pro Packs come in Greystone, State House White, and they transform dull kitchen cabinets into works of art. So Vermont Chalky Paint, we pride ourselves in helping you paint like a pro, even if you're not one. So we, created this paint because we really wanted to have a product that's non-toxic. We wanted to have something that gives back to the community from day one. And so we created Vermont Chalky Paint with the help of Andrew Meyer and Vermont Natural Coatings out of Hardwick, Vermont. The calcium carbonate is mined out of our mines in Middlebury, Vermont, and we have our headquarters in St. George, Vermont. We house our paint in half pint and quart jugs that we repurpose into decorative tea light lamps that we sell at our paint and sip show your jugs parties. And <laughs> so the premise behind our show your jugs is to buy a jug, paint a jug, and show your jugs in remembrance of someone who has faced the challenge of cancer. I had a woman come up to me and she was very offended and she said, show your jugs, isn't that sexist? And I said, well, I'm relieved to tell you that our plastic jugs come in all sexes, male and female included, <laughs> because like cancer, uh, show your jugs doesn't discriminate. I lost my mother, my father, and my, my father-in-law I lost on our very first show your jugs show. I was doing one in Massachusetts and got that dreaded phone call. And I didn't know what to do. I wanted to leave immediately, but I couldn't because we were packed with people in our tent. They just loved the concept. And this woman saw me very upset, and she said, you know what, let's just sit down and paint a jug together. And she said, tell me about what you're doing here. And it changed everything. And so under that pink tent, it really gave me incentive of why I'm doing this with show your jugs and our pink tent is great we I showed my jugs in Vegas my parents would be so proud um, <laughs> we were invited to the National Hardware Show and we met with Zach Giffen who is with Tiny House Nation and we painted stools for a female veteran who needed a home and we want to go back there with a box truck this time because our pink tent is cool but it doesn't hold up into 104 degree heat in Vegas or 20 below winters in Vermont so we wanna have a temperature controlled solar truck that we can drive from Vermont to Vegas next year. And so that's what we're working with Louisa. She introduced us to iFund Women and I said, oh, this is perfect. So we are excited, humbled to be in such esteemed company here. And we are very excited to do our launch of iFund Women in Vermont in October for our box truck. So be looking for our campaign in October. Thank you so much for your attention, and we are looking forward to partnering with iFund Women. And again, much, much thanks to Louisa and our governor and Economic Development Commissioner Joan Goldstein for, uh, for making this possible for us. I would like to pass it over to Heather Dalton and Stroll Runner. She's the founder of that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Heather Dalton, and my business is called Stroll Runner. At Stroll Runner, we are developing a running belt to assist parents who run with strollers to have the ability to do so hands-free. I'm a mom and I'm a runner, and I did what any parent did when my daughter Avery was born. I excitedly put her in my new jogging stroller and set out to do what I had loved to do so much prior to her being born. Within about 30 seconds, I realized that having my hands on that stroller when I was running completely changed my experience. So Stroll Runner solves a problem that so many running parents face, and that is the inability to swing your arms freely and run naturally when you're running with your stroller. I feel very fortunate to be a startup in Vermont. Throughout building my business, I have been exposed to countless networking opportunities, introduced to a wealth of other entrepreneurs who have 
no lack of knowledge and are so willing to share both their successes and failures, and agencies that have no lack of accessible resources to help people such as myself gain all the knowledge needed to successfully launch and grow a business in Vermont. What I have had challenges with is finding funding to do so. Many of the educational pieces are free, but when you have a product such as mine that you are trying to prototype and eventually get to market, it costs a lot of money to do so. There are no lack of pitch competitions, there are venture capitalists like you wouldn't believe around the area, and there are small business loans, but all of these things require a business to show a proven track record of sales and profitability, and rightfully so. But when you're at the stage that I am at where you've taken a concept and are just starting to get it off the ground, there are a lot, not a lot of monetary resources available to do so. This is where I fund women has been the perfect match for me. To be quite honest, I wasn't educated on what crowdfunding was until I reached out to Louisa at Milk Money and was trying to see if they had any resources for seed money to help me get my business started. And this was a perfect example of right place, right time, as Louisa had just gotten off the phone with iFund Women that morning and had spoken with them about trying to bring their focus to Vermont. iFund Women has done many things for me in our journey thus far, but what among them, the biggest thing for me is that they give a platform that is female focused. And the reason that's important is because I will reiterate a statistic that you've heard from two others before me, and that's that in 2017, venture capital money, only 2% of that went to women. So it's important to me to work with an organization that strategizes with and focuses on women. That's a great partnership. They also offer phenomenal coaching, which I have taken advantage of, and I'm happy to say I'm flying to New York City in two weeks to take advantage of their video production. The reason that I am crowdfunding is not only to be able to gain exposure for Stroll Runner, but also to be able to further my prototype and actually get it to market. I've been extremely fortunate already in my campaign to have received a few early backers in the local community, and I wanna say a huge thank you to my dear friend Sarah Hergenrother for her contribution, and Vicki Hemet at Hemet Health for her contribution. Because without people such as them believing in an early company such as myself, I would not be able to get this off the ground. Well, thank you very much, and uh, really inspiring stories. And um, at this point, we'd be happy to take any questions you might have about this subject, maybe first. How important is it, you know, we, we obviously have a problem here with a lot of people leaving, try to get more and more people to stay in the state, come to the state. How important is this particular program to further that goal for you? Well, I think anything we can do to, uh, to help the economic growth in the state of Vermont is, is important, uh, particularly in this category, when uh, we're so small and nimble uh, that we should be able to, to utilize that to our advantage. And uh, this is an example of how to do that. Uh, so if we can attract more, in, uh, more people to the state, as well as help those in the state uh, succeed, I think it's just a win-win for everyone. Maybe. Does anyone else would like to add anything to that? I would just add, like if each of these small businesses owned by women created one job, we would have tremendous job growth. That would also be another attractor for people looking to locate. So the more job creation, the better attraction it is for people to come and move to Vermont. Um, I believe it was Ms. Anderson who mentioned uh, that uh, the entrepreneurs taking part in this would have until March 31st uh, to complete their campaigns. There be, in, uh, presuming, future campaigns following this first one. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, so, so we're launching this initial cohort with people starting projects soon, and the idea is that um, I find women's value proposition is we offer a lot of coaching and preparation to campaigns. So we don't want people to launch their campaign until they feel totally ready until they've built up, they have a video, they have their pitch down, um, and we really help guide people through that process. Um, in order to participate in the first pitch competition, you'll have to have a fully funded campaign by the end of March 2019. After that, we will accept applications on a running basis. And, and we might additionally start another cohort at another time, but this initial cohort, uh, the project should be fully funded by the end of March. Uh, one other question, Ms. Anderson, mm -hmm. comes to my mind. You mentioned uh, the team of coaches. Uh, how many coaches do you have? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, coaches based in our office in New York. I'm based in um, I'm based in Boston, actually, and 
Um, we will have a, coaches come here actually right after this. I'm hosting a boot camp here for female entrepreneurs. And um, we have a big team of women and men that are here to help you get prepared and, and get your campaigns off the ground. Do we know how many women-owned businesses there are in Vermont? I think someone mentioned 23,000. Any other questions? I have one. So obviously the Kavanaugh hearings are happening in Washington, D.C. right now. We've got a lot of questions about Roe v. Wade. Christine Hoff has tweeted out yesterday that she um, would like it to be something here that would take care of it in Vermont to make it stay forever. If something were to change in the Supreme Court, what are your views on that particular this might be the opportunity to <laughs> Thank you. Unless any of you like to answer that one to come up and answer the question. Um, as I've stated, uh, this is a, an issue for the U.S. Senate, and, and all I've asked for is for there to be fair hearings on the matter, uh, and it appears they're doing so. Uh, releasing all the information that's needed to make the, the decision uh, uh, based on, on fact. Um, having said that, uh, we'll do whatever we can. As you know, uh, or most know, uh, I'm, uh, I've been an advocate uh, for a woman's right to choose. Uh, and I believe that uh, most in our state uh, feel the same way. Uh, we'll do whatever we can to protect Vermont. Uh, as we've done in other uh, areas uh, of, of maybe intervention by, by Washington. So we'll react accordingly, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves at this point, but we'll do whatever we can to protect Vermont. Yeah, the governor just uh, earlier today, the FDA put out a public notice that it's now decided to go back on its earlier desire to add uh, a sugar, an added sugar label to 100% maple products, which said earlier in the year it wanted to do in, I believe, 2020. Uh, what do you feel about this and uh, being a very good step, I imagine, for the maple industry? Well, obviously, uh, we felt very strongly in the state uh, there is no sugar added to maple syrup. It's naturally sweet. Uh, it's one of our, our largest industries. It's, uh, it's something that we're known for, very proud of our rich tradition uh, and culture revolving around that industry. Uh, so. We'll, uh, we'll hope uh, they continue uh, to promote it in the way that it's, it's supposed to be. It's a natural product, very sweet, uh, and, uh, and very successful for us as a, as a state. You proclaim September as Disaster Month here in Vermont. How important is it for our state to be prepared, especially as there's some tropical storms bring up the East Coast as we speak? Well, again, uh, we learned a lot uh, after Irene, uh, and uh, as a state, uh, the administration, uh, both uh, Governor Shumlin and myself uh, went around the state visiting many, many sites, doing what we can uh, to, to help uh, as well, a neighbor helping neighbor. And, and, but it taught us some lessons. Uh, we've learned from that. I think we're better prepared than ever. Uh, and we're, in fact, there's a, a conference being held, I believe, today uh, in, uh, in Fairley on this very subject. Uh, we have, uh, the, I have an emergency preparedness council uh, that meets on a, on a uh, regular basis to contemplate this. We have a great uh, public safety uh, emergency preparedness uh, uh, administration uh, in, for times of disaster, and we've exercised that. Um, and we, we, uh, there, there's never uh, been a lack of, uh, of, uh, of opportunity for us to do better, and we continue to learn every day. Uh, Governor, in light of uh, New York's uh, the Attorney General subpoenaing every Catholic diocese in their state as part of a civil investigation of how the church addresses or may have addressed uh, sex abuse, any uh, discussion coming from uh, Mr. Donovan or any from anywhere in your administration over to him about something similar with the Diocese of Burlington? Um, the Attorney General has not approached me about this issue at this point in time, obviously unfortunate for um, Vermont in many respects, uh, and, uh, and, and no one uh, deserves uh, that type of treatment. Uh, we don't tolerate that, and uh, we need to do better. Only one I think under my mind, but I'll uh, uh, Donovan just announced that Vermont's going to be suing Purdue. Uh, do you support that action? Yes, uh, I've, I've made that uh, known. I, I think even during the campaign I talked about, it was just a matter of time uh, before we move forward uh, with, uh, with action. 
I believe, as a state. I think we're about the 27th entity that has done so at this point in time. Uh, I look at this uh, the same as I did with tobacco, uh, that if there is wrongdoing on anyone's part, uh, if there was any deception of any sort, uh, these, uh, these enterprises should pay the price. And so I look forward uh, to this investigation, to this, uh, uh, this action and, uh, and its conclusion. Governor, are you familiar with the Harley Breer Jr. case out of Washington County? Uh, I represent, I grew up in Barrie uh, and, uh, and represented the county for a number of years in the Senate. So I'm, I'm familiar with the case and, huh. uh, and I saw it for the first time this morning uh, that uh, there was a violation of uh, parole, I believe, and Mr. Burger is back in custody. Yeah, so he has a long rap sheet but has never really been charged as a habitual offender. Any sort of I, I would hope uh, that, that at this point in time, I, we have a great state's attorney that I, uh, that I appointed uh, recently, and I believe he'll take appropriate action. Do you, it, do you believe the habitual offender law is working, and, or does it need to be reviewed for cases like this? Well, obviously, uh, we can always do better, and uh, this is an example of uh, where we might want to take, take another look at this. Governor, now that a little bit of time, not too much, but a little bit, uh, has passed by for any thoughts in this vein to settle in, what, if anything, might you be taking away from the trip you made to D.C. last week to help remember John McCain? Yeah, it was a, a very inspiring uh, memorial service uh, in both services. I attended the one at the, uh, the Capitol uh, and then uh, the next day at the Cathedral uh, and to sit uh, in, the, in the somewhat immediate role, uh, rows behind uh, Four, uh, three former presidents uh, was uh, was inspiring, and to listen to what they had to say was even more inspiring. Uh, the bipartisanship, I think it was uh, maybe a plan of Senator McCain to bring everyone together uh, to talk about what what we what we agreed. There's more that, that that draws us together than divides us, uh, and this uh, and he was. Uh, who is known for his bipartisanship, and, it, and it's shown through during the service in many, many different ways. So I, uh, I took from that uh, that we need to do better as a country, as a society. There's a growing polarization across our country. There's a growing divide. Um, but we should, we should take this moment to reflect on what we can accomplish together instead of trying to divide us. Uh, and, I, and I think it's so essential for us as a country to do that. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for thank coming you. in.